So, good morning to everybody. Uh, um, as mentioned, my name is Ilda Manina, and I work here at BIU, at the Venice International University at the Ten Center. And today I'm here to present an experience that we did some years ago. It refers to a Asia Link project. EU, so it's an EU-funded project, and the relation that was called CLIMA project that stands for Hero Asian Research and Training in Climate Change Management. And in particular, I will, I will focus on the e-master that we developed on climate change within the project. And the relationship between this project and uh, the Lean CC project stand, stays uh, mainly in the topic, in the main aim of the project, of the climate project, that was to promote exchanges in uh, education and research. But also there is a stricter relationship because some of the material developed for the e-master of CLIMA was used also for the e-master of the Lean CC project. So the, the CLIMA project ended in 2009. It ran from 2006 to 2009. And just to give you some information about it, the partners, here we see another relationship with the Lean CC project as Kafoska University was the coordinator of the project. And there were other three universities, European universities involved, that are University of Padua and the EHESS from Paris and the Re Uni University from Amsterdam. And then we had three Asian universities, Karachi University from Pakistan and two Chinese universities the Tsinghua and the Renmin University from Beijing. And we had also two associates from uh, government, and one was Italian, the Italian Ministry for the Environment, Land and Sea, that supported also the project, and the other one was the National Development and Reform Commission of China. But the key actors of this project were 20 trainees, that were young researchers and faculty, young faculty members related to the partner universities. And uh, we chose two trainees per each European university involved for a total of eight, and four trainees for each Asian partner university involved for a total of 12. And what we did, of course, we tried to balance the gender within the group, but we also try to balance the different backgrounds in order to arrive to an interdisciplinary group. And we had economists involved, but we had also biologists, biologists lawyers, sociologists, and um, engineers, and environmental scientists. About the objective, so the main aim is to, was to promote the exchange in educational research on climate change. But, of course, the specific objective was to do it through the training of these 20 trainees that had already some experience on climate change issues, but were not really specialists doing it. So the first specific objective was to train them. And then the second one was to create a network of uh, stakeholders within this uh, project and between Europe and Asia. And then the third uh, aim, the third specific objective was to try to strengthen the link between academia and the other stakeholders. And for doing that, we started from the consortium that, as said, involved also some government bodies. About the outcomes of the project, so what we did was, in fact, to create, to build this international network on climate change and sustainable development involving different actors in the project. And some scientific papers were produced by the trainees during the project. And uh, the other point was the establishment of fruitful relations among the different stakeholders. And finally, the development of the curriculum and the contents of uh, an online master on climate change. Uh, to achieve these uh, outcomes, to achieve these goals, what we did was to work 
to work through a training program. So what we did was to organize a training program composed of four different modules that were thematic modules on different uh, thematic areas related to climate change. And these modules were organized, each one in one of the country involved in the project. So the trainees had the possibility to study abroad, even if for a short period. And uh, because there were two week workshop, two week training sessions. And in each uh, workshop, we involved external experts coming from different backgrounds. So we had some academia from uh, the university, the partner university, and mainly from the local one that was hosting the, the session. But we had also governmental organization, NGOs, and uh, professionals, and uh, other stakeholders. With the idea that this was the first occasion to create the network. So involving them in the project, so com commit them to the project. And uh, as in the Lean CC project, we also developed a web platform that was the, the basis of a continuous exchange within the project and uh, beyond it. And here you see the summary of the sessions that we organized. So you can see also the main areas that we treated and where they were held. So here you see the first one was on global, national, local governance on climate change. So we started from governance and political issues. Then we focused on climate change and risk assessment. Then we moved to protection of soil and biodiversity and to energy efficiency and energy sources. And we closed with the integrated water management and air pollution session. And finally, we had, of course, a final conference to present the outcomes and to try to disseminate uh, beyond the community our results. In each uh, training session, we had some lecturing and site visits. We have also some trainees' presentation about their research. That was the moment for them to be develop their papers, confronting with uh, the other trainees, but also with the other experts involved in each session. And we have some curriculum development sessions. So we have some sessions that were devoted to the development of our e-master. So focusing on the Climate Master Online on Climate Change and Sustainable Development, uh, we chose to do it because, as said, it's a cheap tool to reach a large audience, a large target and to try to extend more the community on climate change. And how we did it? Uh, it was done through the climate trainees. So uh, what they did in each session was to, to focus on the team of the session and to develop some units about that team. And they did it in groups. So we tried to form multicultural groups the change for each unit and for each module. So they had the possibility to work together with all the other trainees involved and to bring their different geographic perspective and their different background. And so also to try to answer to meet the local needs. So the Pakistani needs, the uh, Chinese needs, and the European needs. And uh, as I said, one point of the e-learning material is to ensure a certain quality. And what, did it, what we did to do that was to go through a final revision by international experts of all the material produced, just to be sure that that could uh, um, be also good quality. And uh, in each, for each general team, we developed a module for a total of nine modules. And in each module, we have the units. And uh, the units uh, reflect, if you look at the agenda of each training session, you will see that the topics covered by the units are more or less the same, identified within the agenda of the training program. And this was important because in this way, the trainees could confront themselves with the experts identified to give that lecture during the training session and could get some hints 
from the session and also to confront with these experts. And again, they worked in groups. In groups. Generally, there were two people for each group, but they varied from one to three people. And uh, mixed in terms of uh, nationality and background. And here are the, the contents of each unit. So each unit was uh, developed uh, in including some learning goals, summary of the key elements, readings, PowerPoints, case studies, and where available films. And there was also a section that was devoted to uh, the evaluation of uh, the students that attend the e-master course. So multiple choice questions, short questions, and model answer and essay questions. And here there are the modules that we developed. As you can see, the, the title are more or less the same of the training session titles. And uh, here, I will not go in deep on this, but here you can see the units that we developed for each one. So coming from to the curriculum characteristics just to, to hand and to give some uh, uh, something to take back with you about our experience. As already mentioned, we created an interdisciplinary product because it involves people with different backgrounds. And it, it was multicultural, again, because people from different countries were involved in the work. And they brought their international perspective and try also to, uh, to bring what was important for their country to have. And uh, about what happened after the end of the project, because you know this is one of the main problems within uh, the EU funded projects to have also a sustainability. So the agreement was that each climate partner could use the material if the other partners agreed on that uh, specific use. And uh, we couldn't reach a joint use of the product uh, that would have required probably another project because of the accreditation issue and this kind of stuff that are very different uh, between Europe and Asia, and in particular, China is a quite tough uh, actor in this. So, and uh, this is what happened with the Lean CC project. So we requested for the agreement of the other partners to use some of this material on that. And uh, a big achievement of the project was that the 20 trainees now are all working on climate change issues, and most of them became professors, and they are giving courses on the topic, using also this material. So we can say that the material developed within uh, the e master sessions is still used and updated continuously. And of course, the use within this project was a big achievement for us, because it means that also after three, four years, we are continuing to use it. So I want just to close with some pictures of the community involved in the climate project and the real actors of the project. So here you can see our trainees involved in the activities. And we had also some fun. As you can see, we have some cricket uh, <laughs> games and China ping pong uh, uh, matches. So that was fun. And I hope we produce something useful. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ilda Manico, Manino. Now we still have quite some time. We still have around 10 to 15 minutes, I think, I guess, before we, we are closing, for the summary and closing. So please, if you have a question, raise hand. So, if there is no question, one question from Stelios and second from Lothar, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I, th I think we can learn from your project. Um, so, I have two questions, one very short, practical. Uh, is the website still active? What, what happened with the website? So 
so it's still on, but it's not updated. So you can find all the information about the project, all that we produced, but there are not uh, news on that. Uh, and the other one is uh, with regard to the sustainability of the, of the project. Um, did you had other ideas on how to continue using the products or uh, any other ideas on table that you discussed and didn't work? Because I, I saw you referred uh, at the end that uh, the trainees are still using the material, which is very good, but the partners themselves um, how do they move forward with uh, all these products? So as that, oh, that was a, a tricky moment of the project because at the end we had to agree about what to do with the material. Maybe it was too late to agree just at the end for sure. And uh, uh, we just, I mean, everybody can propose a way to use it, but we didn't arrive to a final agreement involving all the partners. So we can use it, but yeah, it's not really a use, uh, a shared use of the product. So on that, I think you can do much better than us. Uh, thank you. My question is also addressed to you. Um, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, you mentioned at some point that uh, the approach you took was interdisciplinary. Now, of course, you know we can talk endlessly about this. Um, my, so my direct question would be: What I saw was indeed a very rich set of uh, approaches to, to to climate change in general, uh, coming from different angles. To me, that that is multidisciplinary by itself. So, so when does it become interdisciplinary? So, what was it specifically about your project that made it interdisciplinary? Uh, to make it interdisciplinary, we we made uh, different people with different backgrounds working together. So they produce something together, putting together the different disciplines and backgrounds. So in that moment, there were not just uh, a sum of disciplines, but they were really the units were really interdisciplinary because they brought their experience and they integrated their experiences and background. So that was the key moment for making it interdisciplinary. Still a question to you. Um, how do you, uh, how did you, um, mm, so what is the relationship between the choices of the, of the topics and the countries that hosted certain trainings? So is there a relationship between the two? Is the topic relevant uh, for a certain country? And did the, that country bring uh, specific um, examples of our uh, responses that are happening there? And how did you integrate the, the topics vertically? So you, for instance, you, you did a training on a certain topic at the beginning. How does that come back in a, top, in a, in a training, in a, fir in a future training? So basically, horizontal and vertical. Uh, so about uh, the choice of the topics and teams and the location to the different uh, countries, what we did was to work uh, on the expertise of the different partners. So we chose some topics that were closer to their expertise. So for instance, for uh, mm, because the idea was also to, to keep the costs low, so to involve mainly for that topics people locally. So, the, for instance, Tsinghua University and Renmin University had a big experience on energy and uh, on air pollution. So that was the choice of the team of their session. And we did the same with the other locations. So, for instance, for Pakistan, of course, coastal management is a big issue. So we chose that issue for them and so on. So we tried to do that. And about the second question about the vertical uh, integration about the different sessions. Uh, a way was to involve the different stakeholders. So for instance, the first uh, session was more on uh, political issues, but then the policy makers were involved also in, the, in all the other sessions. So to have also that point of view for each team and so on. And of course, the trainees worked a lot on that for integrating all the cross-cutting issues within the units and sessions. Would you have any comments on this issue of transferability? Uh, so, you know, we have, we, 
we can learn as much as we want from different countries, but then uh, the task is find out what exactly is that we can bring back and uh, try to uh, sort of locally ap uh, apply where we live. So do you have any you know, anecdotes about this? Yeah. In our case, I mean, uh, we were sure that the countries that were involved in the project were represented in the material, and so also their needs were represented. But uh, we would have need also confrontation with other countries to be sure that that material could be transferable to all the countries. So I think that that's an important point. Try right? to have a, I don't know a kind of share, uh, yeah, interaction with other needs and countries in order to try to meet all of them, or at least not all. I mean, that would be too much, but <laughs> most of them. Thank you so much, uh, Irna, for the presentation. It seems like right at the beginning, you had the intention of having it as a new e-masters. In other words, it wasn't necessarily, you were not necessarily intending that each of the institutions should be teaching it face to face. Was that a fairly core idea, or did that come later? And if it came later, did you have, um, if it was a core idea, did you have a way of, you know, for us, you know, Lian uh, CC, we had the idea that we would run it and we would pilot it, even though we have met, uh, we have met with barriers that, oh, the credits are not transferable, you cannot bring them to this or that. Did you have an experience like that? And uh, did you start hitting this barrier about, credits and what you do with them and what value they are of now, even if you've got them? Or did you just say, okay, here it is, run it, um, and then the period of funding and all that was over? Or what happened around that? Uh, so what happened with the with the climate project and the eMaster was that the main aim was to train the trainees. So that was the core of the project. And then we tried to find a way to make it sustainable. So after the end of the project, not only for the people directly involved in the project, so the 20 trainees and their university where they could teach after the training, but also to a wider audience. So from that came the idea of the Climate Master Online. But that was not really the core of the project. So that was the point why just at the end we started to discuss uh, discussing about the credit transfer and join and how to run it jointly because that was not the final purpose but then we had this uh, quite good I hope, product and so we tried to find a way but again it was too late and uh, there were different opinions so that was not easy. So. Probably if we would have started before and thinking about that as one of the main assets of the project, it would have went, it would have gone in a different way. That uh, we can listen up to this first day and uh, I give to Margarita for summary and closing. Uh, thank you very much to all participants, to those who presented and to those who mm, discussed the, the presentations. Um, and we will reconvene tomorrow morning for everybody at uh, 10. Eventually uh, starting at sharply at 10, that means taking one boat earlier than this morning for somebody. <laughs> okay. So, uh, for those who are not uh, see you tomorrow, and this is important also for those uh, following us on the internet, uh, have a nice evening. <laughs>